Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like to take better pictures in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it. I'm gonna send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is a review of the Nikon 100 to 400 millimeter Z 4.5 to 5.6 zoom lens. Now I took this out to shoot two different things. I shot lacrosse and I shot baseball at St. Joe's University. Now the day before I went to the Philadelphia Zoo hoping to photograph some birds and then found out that all the birds were no longer on display because there's an avian flu going around, so I couldn't shoot birds. That's why I went out and shot lacrosse as well as shooting baseball. I used the Z9 because I wanted to pair it with this so I could use the best and latest and greatest in autofocus so we could get the best results as possible. Now I also recorded my EVF so you can see everything that I saw from the focusing points jumping around to see if they were accurate, to see if they weren't accurate. But what I will tell you is that lacrosse is one of the harder sports for cameras to track because the Z9 did a pretty good job finding the subject and finding the face even when the kids had those massive helmets on. Now we're gonna go through the images a little later. We're also gonna look at some prints that were printed off from the Canon Pro 1000 taken with the Nikon Z9 and this lens, but let's talk about the outside of this lens. Now, the first thing you will notice when you take it out of the box, well, it's the first thing I notice, is that you have a tripod foot here. This is the first thing that I do when I get a tripod foot. I get it and I throw it over there because it's never to be seen again for me until I decide to sell the lens or trade it in. As long as you can find it, just honestly put it back in the box and don't use it. Now, I, I say do that because Look, if you, this is a lens that you should be hand holding. If you're someone who's a little older and your hands are a little rougher and they just can't close arthritis and all of that stuff, then sure, maybe you wanna put it on a monopod or a tripod because you can't hold it all day long because this lens weighs in at 3.2 pounds or 1,435 grams. So it is a little on the heavier side. And for me, it's not that big of a deal to hand hold. But the reason I take it off is it's just much easier to hand hold it here and not have to worry about rotating the plate up to the top. Now, next, we've got a lens hood here. When the lens hood is connected and on, you can't even zoom it. Does that tell you something out there, people who keep your lens hood reversed and actually leave it there when you're shooting? It tells you that it should be on. So when you're shooting, you put the lens hood on, you flip it around, you lock it in. The reason you do that is one, it protects the lens. That's never been one of my main reasons for putting the lens hood out. It's for blocking stray light. It helps make your images better. That's why I use a lens hood at all times, even when I'm shooting indoors. But for now, let's take it off so we can take a look at how many millimeters this is. This is a 77 millimeter filter thread, so you have a 77 millimeter cap right here. If you needed to get some ND filters or uh, circular polarizing filters, they would go on the outside and screw in right there. So you've got a couple of different function buttons around this lens that you could set to different things. I personally never use a function button and I've never used any of the function buttons that the, that the lenses have given me in the past or in the present. They just don't do anything for me. I do everything on the back of the camera and it's perfectly fine. When you zoom, you have an external zoom. So what that means is it's not internal where all the zooming happens inside the lens, it's external. Is that a big deal? The answer is absolutely not. It doesn't even go that far and the throw, it's, I, I like to try and use my thumb and I'm twisting just my thumb without turning my hand and trying to grip it. It's gonna be very hard to not grip it and rip it when it comes to zooming. So this is 100, this is 400, 100, 400. So it does take a little bit of force. It is a little bit tight here, but it also means you're not going to get any lens creep when you're walking around. It's not going to sit here and just go ahead and zoom out on its own. So that's nice. You've got your manual focus ring right here is nice and smooth. Feels really good. You have an OLED display here that is absolutely worthless, at least for me. I know some people like using it. Actually, I don't know any. Steven, you know anybody who likes using it? Now, Steven doesn't know anybody who likes using it either. I think that's a waste of money and development. They could probably cut down on some costs by getting rid of that because I've never looked at this display and was like, oh, I'm at 400 millimeters or oh, I'm at 328 millimeters. I don't care. I don't need that at all. We got a couple of switches here. We've got full for focus, so it's gonna follow the full range. And then we have the limit to three 
meters right here. We also have auto to manual, so you can go auto to manual, which there's not a lot of times you're gonna be manually focusing. Most of the time, obviously, if you're shooting sports, you're gonna be worrying about using auto focus. Now, this lens does have five and a half stops of image stabilization when paired with cameras that have IS built in, or in Nikon's case, VR built in, but there is no switch on the outside to deactivate it, so you have to deactivate that from the menu system if you wanna turn it off. I just leave it on all the time. There's no reason for me to turn it off, uh, so I just go ahead and leave it on. So that's the outside of the lens. I've got a little bit more to say about that, but I do wanna jump into the pictures, starting with lacrosse. Now, I went out to St. Joe's University, thanks to the guys that got me a pass to go out there and shoot because the birds were a bust. I went out and did this. Now, this is the first time I've ever shot lacrosse, and it's the first time I realized how big those helmets are. So any focusing system might have trouble finding the face or finding the eye because of these helmets. Look, look at these helmets. They're thick, they're big, and these guys are running around the field. There's a lot of them. I don't know how many people are out there because I've never played lacrosse, and this is the first time I've actually shot lacrosse but it's, it's a challenge for any focusing system to, to try and focus and track a subject here. I think the Z9 did pretty well in comparison to me using the R5 when I tested out a 100 to 400 Canon lens. It did pretty good. I used a 3D tracking, made sure that the people and face detect was on. I did try out some of the other focusing modes that people are like, Jared, you use the wrong focusing mode. You should use this. And well, some people suggest that I use that smaller box, which only tells the autofocus to look in that area. And I absolutely hated doing that because I just didn't like not having the option of having it focus elsewhere outside of the box. The way that the camera is designed with the 3D tracking is that it's going to find the face first and foremost. It's going to lock on and track. It does a great job at doing that. And lacrosse is definitely a challenge. Um, in terms of sharpness, let's, let's look at some of these other pictures. This is obviously a picture of someone's back. The colors that you're going to get out of the Z9 are always going to be really good. The Z9 does a fantastic job. Let me jump in here real quick because I want to show you this image from the Z9 edited with a bunch of different presets that we've created, starting with Zoolander. Zoolander looks pretty good. Then we've got November Rain. I love how that one looks. Mount Airy is more light and airy. It's kind of the hot thing on the streets right now that a lot of people like. Then we jump up to Almost Famous, which gives you the kind of opposite of light and airy. It gives you a little bit of crunch to it, followed by Fifth Element. Now, those are from Fro Pack 3, but I want to jump into Fro Pack 2 and go to Matte Black High Contrast. Matte Black High Contrast gives you a great look. Double stuffed Oreos is like, wow, look at how good that works out. Followed by Dorothy, and then we've got Bob Ross for people. I just wanted to show you Bob Ross for people. And then from Fro Pack 1, being that this was taken in Kensington in Philadelphia, we've got Kensington, and that looks really good. So look, if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, I mean, I just gave you a lot of great starting points with one file Well, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters, and if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or you could pick up the triple play bundle, which includes all the presets that you just saw me use, and then some, and that's with Fro Pack 1, 2, and 3, and you can save a lot more. Now, let's get back to the video. So one of the issues you might run into, being that this is a 5.6, now it's a 4.5 to 5.6, which is a variable aperture lens. What that means is the more you zoom out, the higher the aperture goes. Vary aperture, it changes. So you go from 4.5, uh, at 100, and when you're all the way out to 400, you're at 5.6. Now that's not a huge loss of light when you're zooming, but keep in mind, 5.6 is gonna be pretty difficult to shoot in indoor situations. So if you're trying to shoot basketball, you're trying to shoot gymnastics, you're trying to shoot stuff that's happening on a stage where there's not a lot of light, a 5.6 may not be the best choice. This is a lens that you use outside. If you're gonna shoot birds, if you're gonna shoot sports outside, but keep in mind that if you you are close to a background and you're at 5.6, the background might be more in focus than if you were at f4 or, of course, with a 2.8. But there's always a trade-off with size. If you have a 2.8, it's going to be much bigger and a lot more expensive, like $10,000 more expensive than this lens. But this looks pretty good. 
I think that the camera did a really good job in this situation, finding the face here. There's no way in hell you're gonna get the eye with any system, uh, and I like the depth that it captured. Would I like to see more depth of field blown out in the background because this has nine blades, nine rounded aperture blades? The answer is I'd like to see more. But that's more due to the 5.6 nature and you know what you're gonna get. But in this situation, you needed the 400 millimeters because 400 gives you a lot of bang for your buck. Now, I wanted to highlight the goalie for a couple of reasons. So this one looks like, oh, as I zoom in this far, I'm like, I'm trying to be like, yeah, it looks like it's a little soft. No, it's not soft at all. It found the face and that looks fine. What my settings here. I'm at 132 hundredth of a second, 5.6, 800 ISO. It looks good. The reason I'm highlighting the goalie is these guys are nuts. I knew goalies were nuts when it came to hockey, but lacrosse goalies, he doesn't have any pads on his legs and they're winging that ball upwards of 100 miles an hour and that ball hurts. One ball bounced back towards me. I, I, it was like this close to me. I wasn't wearing a cup. It would have hit me right in the nuts, but I didn't have the cup. The cup's actually over here on the, it's right there. <laughs> it's, off the, it's off the screen, but goalies, wow. Those guys are ballsy to get into the net and try to face that, uh, so that's cool. Tracking the action worked out fine. Again, colors and tones. I use Skittles as my starting point from Fro Pack one You'll see the plug for that at some point during this video, but that's what I used as a great starting point uh, because it just made my editing much easier. Now, I did take quite a bit of pictures and I did notice that there's some that just missed because the autofocus didn't track the right part of the subject. It was bouncing around, but it was fast. I didn't feel like that the two linear stepping motors were an issue at all. The autofocus is really quick, uh, really snappy on the Z9. I can't tell you how it's gonna be on a Z6 or a Z7, the 1, 2, or the Z5, or whatever the hell they are at, at this point. It's going to work, but obviously, the best autofocusing system that they have currently is in the Z9, and it works out very well. Now, with the next image, you can see that they're doing a face-off, and 400 millimeters is where I was. Now, if you can't fill the frame a ton, you see there's people in the background as we zoom in here. There's cars in the background. There's a fence in the background. You see how that becomes a distraction? That's something to keep in mind, depending on where the background is, like I said a little bit earlier. That's what happens at 5.6. But this is, I would call this a professional lens because it feels great in the hands. It's balanced really well, and the focusing is lightning quick, uh, and I was very happy with it. So we could just keep going through here to see all these different action shots. Um, and I had a teachable moment with this photo right here. Uh, I had a shot right before this that I just didn't like as much as this guy. He got the ball, he started running down the field, and I'm tracking him, and a lot of the stuff just happens so quick, and you rely on that focusing box to find exactly where it needs to do, and it did a pretty good job at it. He's nice and sharp right here. Remember, 5.6 is giving you a, a nice little window to shoot into, 2.8, 1.8, 1.4, 1.2 is gonna shrink it down even further. And so that's gonna be where those subtle nuances, it would be very difficult to shoot this at 1.2 uh, because of the, the way that the focus is with those helmets. Uh, but just watching this guy run down the field was great. Now moving on, the action continues to happen. What my focus was trying to do, and by my focus, I mean me and not the actual camera, is get the action. I wanted to try and get the ball being thrown. And then in this case, I got him making a pass uh, right here. Here. So I think it's a good action shot that's captured. You've got some of the mammoth, mammoth players right here. They're, they're trying to defend. They weren't doing a great job of defending. I think they, they were down like eight, one or something at the time that I was there. But yeah, I was able to get the ball right here, which you're gonna freeze, of course, at 132 hundredth of a second. This is 280 millimeters. Again, focus in on the goalie. Watch how fast this happens. You can see the ball going into the net and the net move and the goalie's all dejected because he missed it with a kick save. You don't have pads on. I don't know how you're gonna get a kick save when that ball is so fast moving and so damn hard. But yeah, that was just my focus was right on him. Now, this is an interesting one. This is one, I don't know what the players are called. I don't know like a defender and I mean defense and offense, but I don't know the attacker and all this. This guy had a longer stick. The guys on offense seem to have smaller sticks. The guys in the middle seem to have longer sticks. Defenders, I don't know about their sticks. And goalies, they got the biggest sticks of them all in terms of the opening of the mouth. But this guy gripped it and ripped it. He just stepped up and fired and I hope that I got the shot. I got him right here at the end and then I got him celebrating right after hoping that I got the focus, and there it is. He is nice and in focus. So 
I shot there at the lacrosse, then jumped over to photograph baseball. Let me cut in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're looking to build your very own online portfolio, use what I've been using for over 10 years for my personal website because it's quick, easy, affordable, and you don't need to know coding. In fact, I uploaded a new gallery of bowling photos in a matter of minutes, and it was right out into the world for people to view. Now, to get your 14-day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. So the baseball field's great there. It's like all artificial turf. There's no dirt. Uh, <laughs> there's no dirt even around the batter's box. It's just carpet. I guess it's safer and easier to take care of. I wish I played on some of that at some point. But right here, we can see this shot is at 100 millimeters of the pitcher. Uh, I wanted to just show you what 100 would give you. Everything's in infinite focus at this point from front to back because we're at 100 millimeters. I am shooting through the netting. A lot of people always ask, how do you shoot through the netting? You just shoot through the netting. You get behind it, you shoot through, you zoom in, the netting will never be picked up if you're this close to it. It's just not going to happen. But this is what 400 millimeter gives you in the same exact spot. I went from 100, zoomed in to 400 to get the picture doing the same exact thing. We're at 132 hundredth of a second at 5.6 at 1000 ISO, again with the Nikon Z9. Now with all that being said, you can put a teleconverter onto these. There's two teleconverters that Nikon makes. I do not recommend that you do that. The more you put a teleconverter on here, the more light you're going to end up losing, which means you got to raise that ISO. It's also going to just add to some color changes when you start putting out of the other glass in front of this. But when we zoom in here, he's nice and sharp. Everything looks fine. Is it as sharp as what a 402.8 is going to give you? The answer is no, but you're really not going to notice a difference. And plus, I didn't even mention the cost of this lens. This lens is $2,696.95. That's an expensive lens for a 100 to 400. Now to put it into perspective, Canon has a 100 to 500 that goes to 7.1, not 5.6, and that comes in at 2899. That's expensive as well, but I rather have the 500. I want more reach, and I'll trade the 7.1, you know, the 5.6 for the 7.1. That's not that big of a deal. But I think the winner of the bunch if we're going to compare to other systems is Sony has a 200 to 600 that's $1998. It's a 200 to 600. It tops out at 6.3 on the aperture scale. It's a little bigger, but it's all internal zooming, and that is a winner in my book. If you're looking to pick a system and just find a, a, a big lens, the 200 to 600 is that option on Sony. That's awesome. The 100 to 400 is nice. I would just prefer to have a little bit more reach. It's perfect for baseball. It's perfect when it comes to football. It's going to be really good for soccer uh, when the players are coming up towards you. So if you're looking to photograph your kids outside, it's going to be great for that. If you're a birder, it may be a little short. And that's where some people may be like, I'll put a teleconverter on. And that might add to some issues when you're out there shooting. But you do have the option to do that. Moving on, we get the other pitcher. Um, he's just you know, throwing the ball. You can see at 5.6, the background is in focus a little bit. You can still see what's going on, that sometimes the background might become a distraction. Uh, when, and then I'm still zoomed out to 400. So that's what you're going to see from the distance that I was at. In terms of sharpness, color, everything looks good as to be expected. Now, this camera gives you the ability, the Z9, to shoot at 120 frames per second. It's giving you JPEGs. Uh, it's giving you three point, in this case, 3.6 or 3.8 megabyte JPEG files. And the whole thing that I was trying to do was to get the bat on the ball. So right here, you can see the bat is right on the ball. And that's what you get when you're shooting at 120 frames per second. You can go through and get time and time again a bat on the ball where you needed to get lucky in the past to do that. Now, I printed this print out because I wanted to see how it held up at 17 by 22. I wanted to see, was it going to be good with a JPEG that's of course baked in with some changes. I did add some Skittles and modified it. Uh, and then I printed it. Now, here's my reaction that I put up on Instagram the first time I saw this print. I just did a print from the Z9 shooting 120 frames a second. This is the first time I'm seeing it to see if it's any good. Yeah, it's good. Right, it is good. I was pretty surprised that it held up. No cropping or anything like that, but the print looks great off the Canon Pro 1000. Highly recommend that printer, and it worked out really well in this situation. Uh, so there's two more tests to do. We've got the sniff test, and we have the wind tunnel test. Let's start out with the sniff test. Here we go. 
Oh. Yep. Smells expensive. It does smell expensive. It, it's, it's pretty expensive. I, it, it's, but it's the option that you have. If you need a lens like this, that's the only option you have. $2,696. So $2,700. Bucks. It's a lot of money to drop on something like this. Uh, but it, it's, it's what you're going to need to do if you're not going to adapt glass. Wind tunnel. <sighs> Ooh. Oh my God, does that stop the wind better than anything that I've seen? So it passes the wind tunnel test. So was I happy with the results from this lens? The answer is yes. Was I happy using the Z9 with this? The answer is for the most part, lacrosse is very difficult, as I've said time and time again. With baseball, I did notice that you could have a batter standing there and it might find the ear, then it might find the eye, then it might go back here and it just bounced around a lot. I just hope that they change their algorithms to get a little more sticky and just stay on the subject, even if they're moving, so that the autofocus subtly moves and just doesn't keep bouncing around looking for something else. But for the most part, this lens gave me nice Nice results, nice images off of it, nice colors, nice tones, as to be expected for something that is this expensive. So is this something that you'll pick up? Let me know down below. Thank you guys very much for watching. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.